Now for something a little different, investments that make money while serving the world's poor. Our Chris Valerio is out in San Francisco at the third Social Capital Markets Conference. She joins us now with a special guest. Chris, all yours. Hey, Carol, that's right. Here, I want to give you some numbers really quickly. 192, that's the number of funds that are classified as social impact investors. And I'm here with Jacqueline Novogratz. Uh, she is the founder of Acumen Fund, which essentially is like a venture capital fund that invests uh, in entrepreneurs in developing countries. I guess the first question I have to ask is when people look at something like this, they wonder, what kinds of returns are you guys seeing right now in this environment? In this environment, what, what Acumen Fund does, because we're working in markets that have never really been served before, whether it's bringing alternative energy to the poor, health care to markets that have never gotten health care, drip irrigation to farmers, we want to get our capital back because we measure not only what we're doing in terms of financial returns, but what's the social impact that you're creating? Are we creating new industries that are bringing... So are you getting your capital back? So we're getting our capital back, yes. Uh, on an individual basis, when you look at the loans that we've made and the investments that we've made, we're getting more than 100% of the capital back. But our long-term goal is to build a patient asset, patient capital asset class, where it's enough to get the capital back if you are seeding industries for the poor in new innovative ways. Now one of the big things in kind of this area has to do with metrics. You guys have partnered with Google, with Salesforce to try to kind of provide certain metrics by which to measure this. How do you go to an LP though and say, well look at this social metric when the returns are just, will pay you back? Well we have two different kinds of LPs. Acumen Fund, which is a philanthropic play. So we go to philanthropists and say, Look, most people are, com are very comfortable giving away 100% of their money and seeing that happen year after year after year for charity. And they're very comfortable making 10 and 20% returns. But there is a role for a new kind of philanthropy where you're seeing each dollar that you invest leverage another $4. Come back to Acumen Fund to be reinvested and now the $50 million that we've invested has leveraged $200 million into these new markets that didn't exist, created 35,000 jobs, and are delivering tens of millions of services to people who haven't. It's a pretty good return on your philanthropic dollar. So much so that we've created a new vehicle where we are looking at 3% monies coming back to our investors over 10 years. I believe that there's a new asset class that even more traditional investors will be willing to take a very small percentage of their portfolio because they care about building a world that they're proud that their children can live in. You know, Jacqueline, we're talking, you know, returns and so on and so forth. I'm curious, what kind of businesses, what kind of scalable businesses that you guys are investing in? Um, so, for instance, um, in Kenya, 50% of the people have no access to sanitation, toilets. And so we invested in an incredible entrepreneur, David Curia, to create a public toilet where people pay seven cents to use it. Showers are, are possibilities in it as well. In three years now, 10 million people this year will use those toilets. Um, it's fundamentally changing the game of what it takes to bring a vital service to a population in a way that covers its costs, but it had to be seeded by patient capital because no traditional investor would have gone there. But this is not, Jacqueline, uh, the kind of microfinance that we hear about where you lend 100 or $200 to someone in Kenya to start his own business or a farm. Uh, you're, you're actually lending larger amounts to, to entrepreneurs that go in there. Absolutely. In that case, it was a $350,000 loan. Um, in other cases, with ambulances, we started off with an equity play. Um, 1298 ambulances in, in, in Mumbai, India, when there were only nine ambulances. They've now recently um, essentially contracted with four government states and will have a thousand ambulances online, 2,500 jobs in the next 18 months. So we're more in the area of 250,000 to, to two and a half million, which I think is a missing middle for how do you invest in the developing world. Jacqueline, what do you think, what do you think is missing for people to invest from the actual like investment, investor banking side? Why aren't they necessarily getting into the space in mass, do you think? Well, I think because there's this bifurcation, this false bifurcation that on the one hand we have charity and on the other hand we, we look at how we make our money, there needs to be developed a whole asset class in the middle. And it may not be just an investment banker that does it, although investment banks can talk to their private wealth communities, it may be a combination of tax incentives and subsidies that we need to ultimately build the businesses that will allow all of us to participate. And some of those assets we were talking about coming from governments, very interesting. Government, not only in ambulances, but in clean water for the poor. We've never been able to do this as a world. 
And now with Water Health International, it started off as a private sector company. We put $600,000 in equity. It's raised $50 million in more traditional capital, but its real exit is the government. Over the next two years, we'll see 300 more villages getting access to clean water. Didn't happen before. Jacqueline Novogratz, founder of the Acumen Fund, thank you so much for joining us.